We are red, red is on. The time being 547. Uh, I, time flies when we're having all, fun. It's all about you, isn't it, Gail? It is indeed. The time being 447. Uh, I'd like to call a meeting of the Tilton Board of Selectmen to order. Uh, let the record show Selectman Scanlon and uh, Constantino are not here but on their way. First to order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the first uh, thing on the agenda is the minutes. We have one from March 26th. Yeah, I'll be all right. March 28th. I'm the new guy. You are the new guy. <laughs> he's doing just, great, Joe. He's just checking to see if you're paying attention. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody is, anyway. <laughs> Um, under the John Bernard section, um, I don't believe he was seeking approval to build a house. He was seeking permission to uh, go around the 24 foot. All right, am I just. I have a copy in her last week's stuff of the agreement. And I believe he was going to build a one family house? Yeah, he is, but that's already been permitted. He has a building permit. Okay. Well, it wouldn't be the selectman's authority anyway. No, no. Okay. No, so that well, whole sentence, that's not why he was here. He was okay. here to uh, ask if the road that provides access to the house could be 18 feet instead of the 24 feet. Okay, gotcha. That That part, but as far as the building of a house, okay, that, so I don't think that. that line. There you go. You got it. Dark. Uh, I mean, my understand, if I may, uh, my understanding of why he was here was to get the selectmen to uh, authorize issuance of building permits on of one building permit on that road. He told me that uh, he had okay. building permits and uh, it had been permitted and his major thing was uh, about the road and that might have been what was holding him up. No, because I think a lot was big enough they could have done like a 10 family subdivision but he's coming to sell it as a single unit. But yeah. I don't think but that wasn't why he was before us, I don't think. Well, it's, yes, because in order to sell the land, he has to get the road to a certain standard. He and didn't that was to... why he was here, in order to get wow. the road set. Okay, what you're describing is planning, not Board of Selectmen. That's right. The only reason he should have been here is the road. That's what I'm saying. Right. No, yeah. it's so, I'm sorry. But so the Board of Selectmen are the entity that's responsible for authorizing the issuance of building permits on uh, private or Class 6 road, and that's what he was here to see. Really? I don't remember that being part of the discussion. I Maybe either. just in passing. It was about the road, I think. Well, you could listen to the, to the tape. The and, and listen to the yep, yeah. yep, yep, because I could be delirious. Okay. I oftentimes am. Yeah. And now that uh, the chair is here, I <laughs> relinquish the gavel to oh, Mr. Scanlon. We're on minutes, John. Hats on our way from Belmont. Um, have you a, uh, some kind of an idea about when you might strike the senior center parking? Is that on your horizon somewhere? 
If it's not, just say it's not, because we have another option. But. I heard through the grapevine that Okay, well, that seems like that guy. So at this point, it's a moot point. Yeah, we should get those striper guys to come in, I guess. Um, that's what we had decided that if you if you had the time, and if not, John Bernard was going to hook up with some painter guy, but that would cost us money, no doubt. Accept the minutes of Thursday, March 28th <coughs> as correct. Second for discussion. And we have motion to second for the discussion. Yep, under opening bids for street sweeping, um, Kevin confirmed the multi one also be used for sweeping this year. I'm wondering if we should have a little bit more explanation in there because right afterwards we made a motion to award the sweeping bid to rule sweeping and somebody would say well why are we awarding it to rule if we're going to use the multi one to also be used for sweeping so I'm just saying a little more explanation of you can list the four or five roads that Kevin said at the meeting that uh, <coughs> bid. so if we could it, it says that two bids were received for sweeping in the land bill Crystal, Andrews, Noise, Hill, and Chapman. So I could put the multi one will be used for the rest of the roads the not listed? Roads. Yeah, just that simple. Sure. Okay. Like that. And Dora just talked about to build a house in town here. And the rest of the later. Thank you. So. Reconfirm that motion that's for the additional team. Um, to, for all corrections. And the second for the same. You can ask Asma, she. You said, said it's you corrected, said, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's any corrections. Yep. We open good. it for discussion, basically. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. The next thing we had and um, five was for uh, the town planner. Good evening. Good evening. So we don't necessarily have a half an hour. Okay. I don't necessarily have a half an hour worth of stuff to discuss. Um, but I'm happy to answer questions you guys have. I think maybe I'll just go down quick review of some things that I think need to be sort of maybe the land use office could could use the select board sort of keeping an eye on and making sure that they're getting done um, things that you know don't always fall right into the daily list of tasks and for that reason can sometimes get pushed to the side things like e91 I'll start with e911 issues uh, we're, we're supposed to work with the state department of safety to make sure that all addressing is compliant with our town ordinance and compliant with the state's requirements <coughs> and i think that's going to be something to make sure to keep an eye on another thing is our tax maps um, when when plans come through the uh the registry as part of our deed downloading we download those plans and those plans are supposed to get submitted to avatar 
where lot lines change and things like that. So that'd be another thing I, I recommend keeping an eye on. Um, the iWork system is, is continuing to work well. I would recommend looking into possibly getting <coughs> logins for yourselves so you can go in and take a look at it anytime you want and generate any reports you want anytime. The reporting is very dynamic. You can click on what you want to see in the report, and I think um, it would help you guys keep an eye on what's going on in the interim. Uh, um, let's see here. Um, I think, uh, going back to E911, um, I think there's going to be opportunities to work with state agencies to, bring, to, to um, provide training for any new folks or folks who are taking on new responsibilities. When I first started here, someone from uh, Department of Safety came and trained me on the E911 system. And it might make sense to have that person, uh, Jeannie Cataret, I think is the name, come in and work with Sheena, maybe you know one or two other people in town just to make sure that's all squared away. Um, Another thing is something you've all seen numerous times. I actually brought copies just one more again. If you want to see, there's this chart that I I handed out to you guys on multiple occasions throughout the years, and I think this ha it's it's a really you, concise summary of what goes on in the land use office, with the exception of some of the you know planning aspects like community development, grant administration that we've sort of just started to really uh, dig into. Um, but I think this could be a useful tool as you're determining how you want um, things to shape up in the future. Um, it proposes a division of responsibilities. In this, we broke up code enforcement and building inspector, and I really feel that that's important to consider that those are two potentially separate jobs and that the code enforcement officer could, could potentially play the role of zoning administrator. And, um, and you know, if I were to redo this chart, I was kind of looking at it as I was waiting to come up to you tonight. I might add uh, Keech Nordstrom or a, a third-party engineering reviewer as a contract, a, as another column on this, and then uh, the town attorney as another column. And these are all these these all these individuals make up the uh, really they, they contribute to the the final product of the land use office. Um, and uh, let's see, another thing, sorry I'm going kind of uh, jumping back and forth to different things. Another thing I think is important that the select board keep an eye on or, or you know, is the, we, the fact that we set up several years ago parcel files and that there's a file for every, a digital file for every single parcel we have. And our goal is to get as many documents related to that parcel in as they come through our office. And I think that system has worked well, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard right now to keep up with. And I, I, I really, I would encourage finding a way to, to stay on that because it's really nice to be able to open a digital file and have useful information right there. Um, All this information is on paper, right? It is on paper somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think there might be some plans that go, yeah, there are probably few rare exceptions, but I think you're right. Almost everything that we have in there is on paper. It's so. just easier to search with a database. Right. Yeah, yeah, and print, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. rather than going downstairs or wherever. <clears throat> um, I think it's going to be important, you know, there's always uh, works in progress and where we have cases, the way we handle cases is they come in, we start a case file, and then once there's an approval, um, there's a lot of work to be done with me making sure the conditions of approval are addressed. So right now there's, you know, some number of case files for cases that have gone through the planning order. Um, through the planning board, but all the all the documentation of all the conditions of approval is in process. So that's something that's going to have to be kept an eye on, and, and um, I'll certainly assist with that. Um, but you know, I think we're all tuned into that. That that'll generate the best outcome. Um, other than that, 
Uh, I guess I would just offer to answer any questions. <coughs> or if there's something specific you want me to talk more about, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, How do you see the land use technician role evolving? Um, well, it depends. I mean, so it's an interesting question. Like some of what I was imagining just sitting, you know, what if, let's say, you know, you want to make land use technician also be the zoning administrator. And, the, and then that allows for the hiring of a contract building inspector potentially. Um, and the building inspector is not going to be that person. In my mind, the zoning administrator is the person you can go to and say, hey, I want to open a shoe store. What do I got to do? And they're going to say, first, you need to go to the zoning board and get two vari you know, variants for this, a special exception for that. Then you got to go to the plane board, sort of set that system. If the land use technician were to take over that role, which it would take significant training and some time, but I, I think it could happen, then you could simply have a just a building inspector, and you're specifically hiring that person to follow up on building permits and conduct building inspections. And code, how about the code enforcement piece, same thing? Well, I, what I'm saying is the code, if you made, let's say you change the, and you change the code enforcement officer to zoning administrator, and then so to make it clear, more clear what the differences between the two tasks are. Um, then you roll all of that under the, so you roll, excuse me, you roll the zoning administrator duties potentially under the land use technician, getting back to Catherine's specific question. I can see that as a possibility, but honestly, there's there's a many, many ways that, that this could go. Um, but again, I, I think, I again, if I were going to do it again, I would definitely add some contractor columns for the third party engineer and the, the attorney. Um, I don't know, Catherine, is that... I mean, again, I guess that's one thought, I would say. I think it's they're... very reasonable. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Dari, are there any outstanding big projects that we should be aware of? I mean, I think you've given us a good overview of kind of the basic day-to-day -day items that need to be watched. Yeah. Honestly, I can't think of anything. Maybe I'm just drawing a blank at the moment, and I will think more about it, and probably on my drive home it will all come to me. But um, I can't think of anything at the moment. I know, you know, across from Lowe's, something's going to happen one of these days. Yes, that, <laughs> whatever it does, that will probably be fairly large. Um, what about the, <coughs> the diocese property? That, that's, we've got to bring that through planning board. So correct? yes, that has to get through planning board. Um, there are some issues that I've sent some emails about relating to, you know, property disputes between, uh, you know, residential abutters and things like that. But nothing that I can think of major that's coming up. There are two cases at the next planning board meeting. Um, one, the diocese case. And another for and that's a, on the 23rd of April. 23rd, yeah, for a for a, a, a business, a, a dog kennel. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I'm sorry. I'll I'll think of it and let okay. you know. Yeah. Anything with Sea Light with their expansion? Yeah. Um, I don't have anything right now. Yeah. But I, I interestingly, I did speak with them today, uh, Tara uh, Stewart and. She said that I think the building there now is 20,000 square feet, and their expectation is the new new building that the building would be the same. Oh, okay, yeah. There is. I got an email from the engineer who's looking at a expansion of sewer on the west side of town, and he wanted to meet. So I said. Um, I'd get back to him definitely. I, I thought possibly um, I could meet with them or we could arrange something else. We'll have to we'll kind of hammer out those details. Um, yeah, I, I, if I think of any other big projects, I'll mention them. Was there an urgent care going in by the Hobby Lobby? Yeah. Lot? Yeah, and that one is there. There's. I'm glad you brought that up. There. There's. A potential opportunity there to improve traffic flow through that case. 
And um, I've gotten some emails from DOT where they've expressed concerns about what's going on over there. And it, I kind of want to try and take advantage of the fact that that project you know, might open the door to sorting some of that out. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Anybody? Yeah. Um, why was the planning board training a non-public on it was Tuesday? A, huh? It was a non-meeting. A non-public. It was a turn of client. It was meeting with a lawyer. I understand. We did the same with Dan Crane, and we invited all boards, and it was open to the public as he went over the planning and zoning stuff. That's all. And it would have been open to the public. Yeah. It was, so, it was just a non meeting. It would have been, no, it wouldn't have been open to the public. Really? It, yeah. It would have been just between the planning board, and that was at the recommendation of the attorney and at the approval of the planning board chairman. So, obviously, I recognize that it was something that probably needed to get clarified. So, you know, I sent to the planning board chairman, I said, this is what our attorney has recommended. And um, she's, you know, I think the feeling was that's. It seems like it would have benefited the zoning board as well, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, so uh, I believe the theory was that he wanted the planning board to be completely comfortable asking whatever they wanted to ask. And he did offer that to the zoning board as well. He said he would do it. Right, he's planning on doing training with thing. the zoning board as right. well. In my mind, if you are doing a non-meeting, then it, there can only be two entities, the attorney and the client. You mm -hmm. can't have two clients there with the attorney. But on the other hand, that criteria doesn't meet the requirements in 91A, especially the Attorney General's translation of 91A. Um, I think if you read, client. so if you read the statute, you know, it's 91A, 1B, something. A2, 1B. Yeah, it's, it just says um, the following, or no, the following will not be considered a meeting, and letter B is con consultation with the attorney. That's why I referred to the Attorney General's translation. Okay. Because so there's more criteria to me I mean, in there than. Yeah. Uh, I, and I was curious too, as Peter, I was like, wow. I mean, I'm obviously very confident <coughs> and in our in our attorney's uh, you know abilities, and so I I was very okay with it. The attorney said it was okay. I could see where you would. Right. But I didn't well, like, if you got like something I to hide, keeping it private's the best way, Joe. Just um, hey, look, as a guy that was going to be there, there wasn't anything too hide, as far as I know. There might be legalities about it, but we. I, I wouldn't work. know because I. I wasn't didn't even invited. think that, so, and then it was not over to the public. Maybe we could ask him again if it's recommended, and what the reason would be that the public would not be invited or allowed to. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, he did respond. It's a training basically. Yeah. Do we know of how much public really wants to attend? Is that the issue? No, it's if we tell the public they cannot go. That's but, uh, the question. Well, I'm just wondering what, why are we, we, we hashing over it? Because is, is there an issue that public is, was wanted to come and they were told no? Well, I question the legality of it. Okay. That's just me. If he wants to give us a training, that I don't think there should be any reason we have to be in session to get that information. Right. I wouldn't think. That's true, too. But that was what he advised, and that's what you followed. Yeah, yeah well, we should ask after, again. After clarifying, which so, I'm not trying to I will put the chair in. I'll ask John him again. again and yep. there's more specific. Um, but the training was canceled due to the weather. Thank you. So going forward, we can get that I'll ask him. absolutely clarified. Because I'd rather open it to the public if we can. Or other boards or whoever might think, be interested. You can. He can. What certain. purpose, though? I think what he wants is the board to just fully not. being transparent. He wants to train the planning board on what Good. their what their duties and, and things and are. And the public knowing that is not a, a detriment, I, I don't think. I think we'll clarify it with them. Yeah. And then, yes. You, you're going to be what talking about... conservation members want to learn a little bit of planning and zoning to so help them? Find out. We'll, we'll clarify that yes. with them. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, anything else? Um, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank you uh, personally um, for all you've done. I perceive that you've done for the town of Tilton because um, I think we're better off than we were. <laughs> thank you, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been, I think we've, we've it's been a, a very productive five years and I'm very proud of everything we've accomplished together. Uh, so tomorrow's your last day. Yeah. So when's your day, next day after that? <laughs> <laughs> are you coming in like one day a week or how I, are you planning? I, I, I don't know. It? Well, I'll probably, yeah, I'll be attending meetings. Um, yeah. There, you know, I, I, there's a zoning board meeting next week. Mm -hmm. um, I put in my email to you guys kind of the different tasks, and I mentioned that as an optional one. So, you know, we, we can talk about that. Um, I mean, I guess my plan would be to attend that meeting, but um, we can play that out as time goes on and see where, I you know, obviously I want to make sure you're getting your I don't want to well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Certainly. Anything else? That's it. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate Thank it. Have a night. Good night, Dory. Good night. And Kevin, come on down. Or come on up. Good. Hello. Hey. So. He's been up to, I think, we've all received a copy of his report. Or just have a look at it. Maybe you can hit on some of the uh, highlights. Highlights. So I guess the, the biggest. If I can hold off and ask him questions after uh, he's completed at least a few sentences. Okay. Well, I think the, the biggest highlight is I spoke with the salesman from R&D, and he gave me a two-week window that they would be starting in the last week of April to the first week of May. He said that he would give me two weeks notice, confirmation of when we would start so that I could put out the um, sign to let residents know that it will be starting in the date. Um, so I think that was a, a pretty good development this past week. Um, and again, I'm doing some research on line painting, crosswalks and stop lines and things like that. I'm trying to be cost effective, whether having our department do it or to, to hire it out. Um, I am getting quotes on the reflective um, paint this year instead of just the plain white. Um, from all the research I've been doing, uh, it's not that costly, and the the, um, the end result is is um, um, very safe. Aspect. <coughs> it, it illuminates the the crosswalks it, it, in the headlights and things like that. Um, the only thing that I've also learned is that once you start with the reflective aspect, you have to continue with it on a yearly basis. Um, but the the cost isn't so excessive. A 50 pound bag is $30. How and much is regular paint? How much is regular paint? Yeah, it's, it's an extra cost, 50 bucks. What's the other one go for, 39.95 or? Well, the, the added, it's an additive that goes on top of the paint. Hmm. Are we talking glass beads? Glass beads, that's okay, correct. Okay, so it's paint plus the 50 bucks. Yes. Okay, I see. Yes. <coughs> um, and the, the stuff that we would be painting, we don't get a lot of turning traffic, so it, it, it tends to last longer. So the um, the added cost, I don't think, would be that much of a hit to my budget. Um, and it's, it, I think that it would be very so cost effective. Less often. Exactly. Um, so those are the avenues I'm trying to figure out before it's time to start painting. Obviously, I I have to wait until the weather is more conducive to it until the road is clean and clear and, and so that we can, so that it will adhere and I don't have to worry about it peeling up. Um, mm. The other thing that we're doing is we're getting ready for amnesty week. Um, I'm not waiting to the last minute to get my dumpsters in to get the yard situated and clean. 
all of my Gaylords are set up, all of the pallets are set up, all the staging areas are set up. Um, I am trying to resource uh, our research our, an outlet for our propane tanks that we collect because I, I'm reaching, I'm having some delay from the, the company that we use now. So I'm trying to research other companies to come in and, and re, uh, recycle those. Um, we, we can't process the propane ourselves. In, in fact, we can't recycle it ourselves. Is there, is there any of those tanks that belong to like Eastern or? Uh, these are strictly tanks that we can't give back to their owners? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, they're decommissioned and, and some of them still have product in them. So they're dangerous and I, I, I'm trying to find the right source for that so that we can get it done properly. Um, uh, let's see. <coughs> Just starting to clean up the um, cemeteries and we're sweeping as we can, weather, you know, weather permitting, we're trying to get ahead of our, our town-wide cleanup for Memorial Day, um, again, so that we're not trying to get things done last minute. Um, we are working shorthanded now. You know, we're, hopefully we can get some more applicants in so that we can have a better pool to pick from. So in a couple of weeks, I'm hoping that we can start that process and get the replacement people that we need. So, so the pool is shallow so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four names, but I, I would like to see more to pick from just to see what's out there. And, and we're handling things right now very well, so I'm not feeling the pressure just yet to, to hire somebody in. So I'd like to take my time so that we can make the proper choice for that. Um, so not much else. Um, the um, 3B that I'm working on now, I know that it's, um, I've got about 12 hours into it. I've got another three or so, to, and then it'll be a, a complete project where I can test drive and put that back in the fleet for the police department. That was the transmission replacement. So that's that's actually going very well. How long have you had in the shop? It's been in the shop for about five weeks now. Um, they've been utilizing the other Detail fleet, the, the Crown Vicks, they've been utilizing those vehicles to give them some exercise. So it's been a, a pretty good endeavor as far as getting getting exercise to all the other vehicles that would normally be sitting right now. So, um, and you know that a sitting vehicle is very bad. You need to exercise them and get them, you know, uh, give, they just need to, to run. It's a negative effect if they just sit. So but that project is it'll be done this week, um, this following week, and that'll be back in the fleet. I had a couple of hiccups um, with time. Just uh, I was planning on getting it finished the other day, but I just kept getting pulled away, and you know that's expected. So, but everything else is still in good shape. Um, I'm still doing the services to the police vehicles that are you know that come up um and my um the vehicles and fleet and, and the equipment for the town uh, for the highway department as well so and uh my foreman helps out where he can which is nice and it uh you know it gives him something different to do you know once in a while which he likes so i, I like to give him that kind of stuff to, just to keep it interesting for him. I think my budget is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm very you're proud of that. You're over, gonna be overspent. Not at all. No. It's in fact, good. I was looking at it today, and in fact, um, my budget. I still have fifteen thousand dollars unused in my salt sand salt budget, and I have uh, about seventy-five ton of salt to carry over to next year, the next winter season. So that is in really good shape. Um, I looked at all of my other lines, and and we're we're uh, if if we stay on the same track, we'll we'll be um, either right at or below budget on most of my lines. 
I'm very cautious and very aware of where I'm at on a, a weekly basis with that. So, yes. So far, no surprises. No surprises. No big ones. Anyway. No big surprises, <laughs> no. And I don't foresee any either. Um, like I said, everything's, my biggest expense would be a, a, a failure in one of my trucks or a piece of equipment, and I just don't see it. It's, there's no signs of anything like that happening. So I think we're in really good shape. I even believe that my uh, heat budget is down as well. You guys so, bundling up in the shop? Or? Yeah, I just adjusted my um, thermostats and every, you know, it doesn't need to be 70 degrees in the shop to work. I mean, we, I haven't set it 60 just to, to make it comfortable and you know, every, everybody's good. Been mindful of the lights and um, garage doors being open, you know, things of that nature. Just, just being aware and mindful every, with everyday operations, and it's nice to see that it's, it's actually, um, it's working. You know, just keeping my budget in check. So, are you uh, involved in any training projects for yourself or the crew? We are actually. We are. Um, we're actually going to start hosting T squared classes this year. We've got what, what now? the T squared classes. Huh. Um, I don't think Tilton's done it in the past. But we're hosting two this year. Um, it's a uh, flagger recertification and a chainsaw class. Um, and when we host a, a class, we have um, for our guys, we have a free seat, so it doesn't cost anything. And all I have to do is pr provide the facility, meaning the the building and seating. They provide everything else, so it's. It's not an added cost for us to host a class. So it's. When are, it's you having, when are you having? I'm sorry. When are you having the classes? I can't hear. Oh my you. goodness. I said. What, I asked when. Uh, um, the flagger class is in June, uh, June 27th, I believe, and the chainsaw classes will be in the fall, September. I believe it'll be September 16th, right around that time. Um, I just f finished up some um, um, education for the uh, SWAT solid waste <coughs> certification, keeping that going. I've um, kind of streamlined everybody in the shop to be on the same schedule with that recertification, so that everybody gets sent to this class at the same time. What I have, what I noticed in the past was. Um, like one person would go in June, one person would go in September, and it was chaotic to keep track of. Um, so I made it a point this year to just send everybody on the same day. So everybody gets their, their uh, continuing edu education hours, and that way it's easier for me to keep track of. And um, we are, uh, well, we lost one employee, but I'm continuing with my um, uh, herbicide and pesticide license. Um, as time allows. I'm hoping to have it either by this fall or next spring at the latest. So, yeah, we, we're, we're doing some, some big stuff. Um, yeah. And also continuing with my ASC certs. I have a couple scheduled for this um, uh, June and July. Um, one of them is going to be uh, transmissions and uh, transaxles, and the other one is going to be for um, Advanced engine control systems. Oh, fun! Oh yeah, it'd be a good time. <laughs> but that's where the that's where the industry is going. The, you know, I have to have it. So um, the state inspection uh, facility is is uh, still current. Um, so that's all going well. Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're doing some pretty big stuff here. So I had one question that came up, um, and I don't know if with the answer to this or you okay. want to direct, but there were a bunch of trees that were being cut down over the last few days. Yes. What, what's happening with that? Um, with the park the trees park or different just places like by S1 was up there? Yes. Um, Eversource is, is doing a, a, a large cut in town just to keep the, the foliage and trees at bay. And uh, we did meet with um, them this past Monday um, and gave confirmation for 
the ones that were located in the park and in the, um, the Veterans Memorial um, and along the river. And we did, um, there was negotiations. They were going to give us some flowering trees that stay 30 feet or lower um, in, in place of the ones that they were remove, removed. Um, and that's a complete removal. They're going to come in with a stump grinder and grind the stumps, and we're going to plant the trees in the, you know, in place. Um, when it comes time to pick the trees, though, I would like to make a recommendation of a magnolia tree because I believe that they flower twice a year, which would be real, really pretty. They, they're in the park, right? <coughs> yeah, two are in the park, and two are in um, the. I call it the Veterans Memorial. It's, it's the Civil, Civil War Park. Civil War Park, oh, thank you. I don't know about that one, but the Park Park, that would be the Park Department to choose. They're both the, the Parks Commission. Oh, I think. Both the park. oh yeah. okay. So they would be the uh, ones that I'm still, about. I'm still learning. They were there with the Public Works Director. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, both parties, okay. our tree guy, yeah. he's more yeah. than happy to take suggestions. Chop liver okay. tonight, don't worry. <clears throat> okay. So I would, so just I would email him directly just, and just suggest that. Yeah. Just as... Just to back up from that, when they called, they contacted Kevin and gave the outline. Kevin brought it to me. I then went to the Parks Commission and actually the selectman and said, who would like to attend this meeting mm -hmm. um, to look at the trees, to, to give your permission, because they did need your permission to cut those trees down. So uh, they, there was one meeting that got canceled, and then they had the follow-up meeting this last Monday. So Peter good. was there, and Bob Hardy was there, and Kevin. Kevin yeah. Yep. Yeah. That um, that actually leads me to the next question. The the wood that was left behind, we stockpiled at the shop. I wanted to ask if we had any um, residents in town that could utilize this as firewood. I bet we do. Um, some that would be. Metro yeah, have meeting. To over which uh, what the criteria is. Sure, I just wanted to put it out there and, and let it be known that it's there and, and um, wanted to run it by you so that it doesn't sit there and rot and go to waste because somebody could use it for heat this much water. There's Heather. probably a quarter of firewood there. Would Heather be a good person to oh, yes. touch base with? The you might know somebody that possibly I just don't want it to rot and go yeah. to waste. If it starts to rot, let me know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can find someone else, great. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Campfires in the park. <laughs> so, I have some questions if you're done with your. Sure. Yeah. I wasn't sure when that was. It was kind of interesting. Um, when you start the road project, mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned before that you thought that road was going to be open for a while. Mm -hmm. Especially now that I have confirmation from the water department mm -hmm. that they're going to do some upgrades in there, which I was very happy with. I don't know, Cedar, we're going to have some sewer mm -hmm. going in. But, no, that's great. Um, I'm thinking that, yes, we need to let them know this is going to take place, but I'm also wondering if we, that we should mail them a mailing, letting them know exactly what's going to take place the road's going to be open what to expect time Are sure we're going to block off some lanes yep. one ways or should we just post a notice on the website and mm -hmm. you know kiosk no and i think that i would rather be proactive and, and have a mailing go to the residents to be affected so mm -hmm. and i can sit down and and outline now that i have a start date i can outline um what's to be expected and, and, exactly. and then we're going to be um, proactive with dust control and things of that nature. Perfect. Um, there, believe it or not, there are residents on, on all, uh, I think, on all of those streets that don't have computer access. So. Mm -hmm. We and we did at a, when you brought this up before. We did say you all agreed that's what we would do is do mailing. mailings and mm -hmm. but we also should post it in prominent yeah. places. Oh like sure, yeah. 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 Warrants and yeah. The kiosk. Um, um, yeah. The other question I have is: If you had an opportunity to research um, Northfields, well, they don't do Amnesty Week, but their ticket. The ticket. Yeah. Sure. Have you had an opportunity to? Or? I've heard a bunch of um, mm -hmm. pros and cons to it. I mean, okay. you know, like how many tickets do we uh, award to each? Um, do we do it by household? Do we do it by car registration? You know, because somebody could have 10 cars registered and 
they get 10 tickets per per vehicle i mean that's that's a lot of tickets mm -hmm. um, but beyond that i mean i think we can skirt through that does it mm -hmm. seem like a much I, to be honest, economical and yes. better way. I, I think that it's a more economical and better way. Absolutely. Um, okay. And mm. I'm not sure how to go about getting this done, but I would like to see our dump stickers incorporate license plate numbers on vehicles, so that when somebody comes into our transfer station, we not only see that they have a dump sticker for our town. But it also matches the license plate that the car, that it's attached to, so that we don't have residents say, "Borrow my dump sticker." Hey, borrow my dump sticker. Um, that's one way of keeping everything kind of check and balance. Check and balance. Um, I'm curious to, in this this handout yellow stickers or whatever it is. Um, when we have MSD week, there's mm -hmm. no. There's no top end. I can bring you all the crap that I need to bring. Mm -hmm. If I have seven stickers or whatever, now I'm, I'm limited to seven. So mm -hmm. does that mean, A, that we have to have dumpsters all year round? B, what is the cost of those dumpsters? And mm -hmm. C, what do I do if I need I have more stuff than the seven tickets would, would take care of? Sure. What do I do? Okay. Ah, that's, yeah. that's why it's more economical. Now yeah. we don't have the residents don't have yeah, the, to pay. Yeah, exactly. They're they're allowed so many free tickets. Mm -hmm. Anything beyond that, they have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And that's why our whole transfer station system needs to be overhauled. It really does. Northfield has this now. Because um, one of my projects coming up. I know I'm very ambitious, but <laughs> I, um, I would like to see us have dumpsters year-round. Uh, from what I've been told, the past practice was because it was such a hassle to maintain the snow around the dumpsters. Well, that's no longer an issue. We have a loader, an excavator, plow trucks, and snow is not an issue. Um, and we do turn away a lot of residents during the winter months that want to dump stuff. And, and that's the stuff that we're finding either on the side of the road or what having kind of stuff that do a kind of like sofas, mattresses, um, so stuff wood that the burnables that would be in a dumpster. Exactly. Okay. Um, we're the having same to one turn. Andy posts on Northfield Hilton talking that they find by the boat launch and a few other spots in Northfield. Um, so even with their tickets, it's those that are going to dump it are going to dump it. But if we had it open. It would minimize. It would be minimize it. Yeah. Didn't um, we uh, actually go to the to the cleanup days because we were having stuff out at out on Pest House Road? Oh no, Catherine, how much stuff have you collected over the years mm -hmm. on Pest House Road? Lots of it. Well, that's not I the reason why we did it, though. Well, 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 Kevin helped me one morning. <coughs> yeah. But um, but I don't think that's the, the reason. There, there, there's, there's a combination of things. More than one reason why we went to cleanup week. Mm -hmm. One was that Public Works was actually going around That's right. to each Picking property up. to yeah. pick it up. I mean, oh, each, each, each day was a different thing. I don't remember thing. that at all. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially the these. And, yeah. <laughs> and then there was the trouble of, you know, when we initiated the cost because we went for a full-fledged dump mm -hmm. at Home Depot to what we have now, the transfer station. And I was probably, before Amnesty Week, finding way more stuff out in the woods, mm -hmm. way more. I, mean, well, I, I think that if we initiate uh, the ticket system and have dumpsters year round, it would help alleviate that pressure to have, okay, I've only got one week to get rid of my stuff. It would be strung out through the year. Well, just two weeks, right? Yeah, two weeks, but. You still have to hoard it. You still have to hoard it. And then, it, you oh, know, yeah, you know and then there's the, um, the personnel side of that. I mean, in this, we have a full day on Saturday that's overtime for everybody. Mm -hmm. No, I don't feel that that's necessary, especially if we can re, um, re, rebuild our, our transfer. So we had it, if we had it open year round, year it would round, still it would, be the every other, you know. It would be a trickle effect. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah, but what we spend in overtime. On two Saturdays a year might might not be as much mm -hmm. as trailer rentals for a year. Mm -hmm. Might might check out that number too. The um, 
our container rental, our dumpster rental is $100 a month. So, all right, so that's uh, $1,100 yeah, for the dumpster and then you'd have to have a construction. Yes, yeah, so there would be a construction, we basically a C&D and then an MSW yeah. dumpster. And then the metal. Yeah, the metal is free of charge. Right. Um, so, but you know, the metal that we collect over the winter would offset the cost of the additional dumpsters because we actually get paid for that. So, well, you got to see some numbers. I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. exact, that definitely the one, one I'd like to put together. And uh, yeah, and I'd love to see some sort of proposal sure. with hard figures. Yeah, I can work on that for my next meeting if you mm -hmm. like. We can start but perhaps the ticketing it. shouldn't be per car; it should be per address. Mm. Yes, per per household. So Would, um, and that could go by tax card, correct? So your question about the dump stickers having license plate numbers, and I can see how that would be handy, but so I'm thinking of just myself. I have three different vehicles that I would use to bring stuff in, mm -hmm. whichever one is not full at the time. And I'm not being facetious, but, you know. So at the time of... Have, at the time of registration, you could tell the town clerk that I have three vehicles I'd like to use for my dump or my transfer station duties, and can I have three stickers? But then what's to stop Catherine to go over to Joe's and haul Joe stuff? Uh, right. You know, like <laughs> so I'm wondering, could, could those mean. stickers also have the property address on it? It could, yeah. And it could be verified those... by the car registration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, it's I mean, we can, that you have to have in your car, is it not? Trash yes. Yes. I, I think, <coughs> you know, having the registration is good, but if you put the property address, it kind of leads to somebody in the parking lot reading what your address is. And I can do that online. Oh. And also find out the value of your home, how many bedrooms you have. Yeah, but who's going to take that, that I, I, opportunity? I, I would just like... Just walk by and look at the address. I don't think it's going to be Please. something we're going to decide overnight. No. No, no I, but I, I would like... Just, I'm yeah. just suggesting an alternate idea. Yes. Okay. Could, could we um, all agree to uh, have the registration numbers put on the stickers at this time? It would just require a Sharpie and when they're issued out. I don't know if there's room on them. I would ask it's Cindy. Right, right over it. I would ask Cindy before she orders the new ones because she's the one who orders the dump stickers. Yeah, the little blank spot. If there's blank spot, yeah. Exactly what Pat said. Yeah. If there is a space if I, if available. I could pursue that. With the permission of the board, mm -hmm. I could have a conversation with Cindy and yeah. and try to get that accomplished. Possibly see if because before she issues them, she could put down the right. license plate um, number. Because I have seen that done with parking permits at other places mm -hmm. that are gunned like that, and they peel up the sticker, they write the thing, mm -hmm. they put the sticker down, hand it to you. Yes. Yeah, I think sure. you really need to get her involved because so. it's going to be something that her or work for deputy her. is. It's extra work for her, right? Yeah. You need her, you know. Okay. I would brainstorm with Cindy so to see to if that could be done. I lost my Is that stickers. an annual sticker? Yes. Okay. okay. Sounds great. Very good. Anything else, anybody? Um, I have one more thing to add. The Academy Street um, situation that we've got going on. I was able to locate a company in Connecticut that does the um, imaging to look for voids in the, in the road. I'm just waiting to hear back from them so that I could get a, um, maybe an estimate how much it would cost for them to have them come up and, and do some <coughs> imaging of the road to see what if there is any voids that we're going to have to deal that with. That's voids that will show you that, that this section of ground is moving. Yes. You'll be able to see that it, it's disrupted. Mm -hmm. So. Gives you an idea of what's underneath the road. You'd know on the surface if it was. <laughs> so I can tell by broke. the retaining and wall. And it's going to fall apart. Out. So you'll have that information coming up yes. next week. Yes, and I'll, I'll incorporate. As soon as I get it, I'll have it in my weekly report. Right. We'll put, that on the, we'll put that on the agenda to discuss that. I have another question if Catherine's finished. When Catherine's finished. Well, it's more of an announcement. I just, while Kevin is here, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the Park Commissioners at their meeting on Monday night decided to allow, um, or award, I don't know if it's a gift or not, the Public Works Department to take over the maintenance 
including the lawn maintenance of Riverfront Park and the 132 ball field for this season. We'll see how that works. Very That's good. something the Budget Committee has wanted for quite a long mm -hmm. time. So. And I've already, I've worked in the part-time salary um, in my budget already for that, so that's good. So Tim is working on um, what figures we would transfer from the park commissioners into public works. Okay. Yeah, I think you'll have that for us next week. Very good. It was a little busy this week. <laughs> <laughs> a little. <coughs> so we're really doing a lot with the parks now. So, I'm just going to hold that thought for a second here. I just had an idea, kind of like a thing just went off in my head when you said that. If we're going to have, if it's more cost effective for Kevin to do <coughs> the parks and maintenance, particularly Riverfront, if you're going to allow him to do that this year. Wouldn't it be better if we just gave them everything to do with parks and then Parks Commission focused on the recreation part of parks instead of having to deal with the trees and, the, and, and all of that that we're going to well, give Well, I think him. there's a lot more involved than just the maintenance of the parks that the Park Commissioners deal with. Um, but that's certainly something you could take up with the park commissioners. Um, right now, Paul Rushlow will continue with the other two parks because he is licensed yeah. to take care of the foliage and spray whatever he needs to. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just kind of thinking of if, if, if you wanted to put that under the, our purview, then we wouldn't have to be dealing with moving monies here, there, and everywhere. And then you folks, fo well, and then we, parks just focus on the... We'd only do it for this year, right. and then right. in the budgeting for this fall, um, Kevin would simply budget it for his budget, and the park commissioners would not. But you also are right, because you do have other things that you take care of in the park, but I'm just wondering, because it, is that not something that Parks Commission can move over to public works and then just kind of separate that and have parks... We that, just did. You know... But you said there's more to it than that. There is more to, there's more that the park commissioners do with the parks than just maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to sit here and go through okay. all that big I list. Think one of the things is the parks has a vision of how they would like the parks to be, and that's something that they, they keep track of, that it's pleasing and all that. That's one and, of them, yes. And to put it on to Kevin, that's kind of, they've, that, that so it would be like an advisory important. type of thing. Yeah, That's I get important. it. Keep Pardon? the parks in charge right. of there is a, how it should There is a way. I mean, when we have the benefit of Bob Hardy, who is the, I call him the tree guy, the forest, one of the forestry guys for the state of New Hampshire with his expertise. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. We've had extensive talks with the park commissioners, and Jeannie and Kevin and I met in the park, and Kevin's prepared to take it all over, and... If you need something, you'll contact our commissioners, and yep. hopefully it'll be a great thing. Oh yeah, I'm not afraid to reach out and ask questions. That's yeah. all things. It'll be a great so. thing, I think. I, I have um, a question. Um, I have a couple questions actually. The the senior center. Mm -hmm. were, were you privy to the new parking up there? At the kind senior of center. Kind of in a way. Mm -hmm. In a roundabout way, because they asked you to do the striping, I think. They did, they? yes. Okay. And I am prepared. I already have the, the white paint. I just need the, the weather to cooperate long enough for me to do so. Okay. Well, that was one of my questions. The weather, how did you find it plowing with the curbings in the in the We didn't plow. We just treated with salt. Okay. Okay. And how, how am I supposed to separate the two... Parking lots well, we're really not uh, gonna. Because now it's one large parking. Well, lot. you can kind of gauge because they're gonna have it plowed anyway. But I think they're gonna just we're just hey, gonna who? push it all back. Awakening Chiropractic, but they're not gonna go way over to our side. So our parking, 
where we we mm -hmm. were into the building, mm -hmm. you would just push it right back up into their snow storage area, because we're allowed to use their snow storage now, which is way in the back. But actually, is there still an easement there? No. <coughs> it. So will the building was sold, so that so the easement is no. So, but we have permission because we're going to use it as common parking for both of us. So we're going to use Awakening Car Practice parking, they're going to use our parking when we're not there. So it's going to be a, a shared kind of thing. Okay. But in the front, you're still going to push it over to the telephone pole. And then on the side, you can now just go right straight up back. The last two parking spaces on the left that face Route 3, mm -hmm. that's going to be snow storage area. Yeah. So you can just go right, you don't have to go up and turn to put it on our grass anymore. You just go up and not block the walkway. That's all. Okay, I guess Hopefully we'll see how it goes. So next December. So do you have an idea of how to stripe yeah. that? Did you get an idea? Of Okay. Yeah. You have an uh, an idea when that would happen. Um, the first nice day I have next week. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be fifty, sixty degrees. Um, clear weather, obviously, and um, and kind yeah. of not interfere with the lunches over there. Yes. Because then I get like a hundred phone calls. No, no, we'll uh, we'll pay attention to everything and and we'll get it done next. Tuesdays week. and Thursdays usually. Okay. Is when they have the most. Okay. Uh, and that you won't be able to do it because they'd be parking anyway. Has the curbing been placed by the building that we talked about to keep yes. yeah, cars right. away from snowfall? Yeah, I think I sent an email out with pictures. I think I saw it. I think I did. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Did I? And John moved it right away. Mm -hmm. But we've had such lousy weather to do any type of striping. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't been able to do that. So is there going to be any... Um, so that they were very confused on how to park. Mm -hmm. I noticed the seniors all know how to park, and I've been by there when they've been there. Mm -hmm. But Awakening Chiropractic clients still Why think there's an invisible curbing there, yeah. so they're parking <laughs> in the middle. So when you walk across the lot, take a big step in the center, and that'll really confuse them. <laughs> yeah, that's a question. So, it's not really a question, but on that same note, you had asked and talked about um, contacting the roof company that had done the roof for snow yeah. stoppers or whatever. Um, I did contact them and um, she, the, the lady's going to send her tech out to um, view and advise on how many, um, they don't do gutters, they just do the snow stoppers and they're hard plastic at $35 each installed. Um, so after the tech goes out and views, they'll call us What back would be needed on that side? <clears throat> So we know that they don't do gutters. There's another company that we did the front and okay, the back gutters. Can we gutters. keep on Kevin? Okay. Well, this is part of Kevin. I have a question. Yeah. So we have a, uh, a severe snow season. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean we have to get up and shovel the roof now that we're stopping the snow from coming down? No, it's just going to be a, just a few here and there t to delay some of the snow coming off the metal roof. Mm -hmm so that it doesn't come down on the cars because they're now facing into the building. But they're away from the building far enough so that it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Doesn't it stop it so it doesn't come down in giant slabs? Right, it comes, it comes down, down in pieces, in right. Pieces. Okay. That's, that's the intent of it. <coughs> okay. That's what they do. And it's only going to be on that side because the other side doesn't, get, yeah. it doesn't need it. Okay. Anything else, Kevin? I think I've touched on everything. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. It's Julia time. Great. Good, thanks. Have a nice. really uh, this map of proposed land 
costs and just a bit about the financing so it's, thank you uh, last I checked. Last I checked, um, that, that you, uh, the select board, wanted where and how many lamp posts for the for the sidewalk project. So that is um, my uh, best estimate of where they should go after just going downtown. And I'm <coughs> happy to have uh, input on that because it's very difficult to get that. <laughs> We'll be talking about that as a board, right? Eh? So you have five. Is that where you have five? Yes. What kind of lamp posts are they? Are they Turn going on? Yeah. Um, well, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Okay. This is just because of the sidewalk. As far as I know, this is because you're having the sidewalks done, and you're going to have like an outlet, and you want to know how many outlets and where. So that's that's why I'm basically here, uh, as far as I know, to tell you that, just kind of provide that information. Has your committee gotten an estimate of the cost of electrifying these? Um, no, no, we haven't gotten that. This is just about this is what I was, as far as I'm asked to do, to get that information. Um, I've started to uh, finally got a hold of somebody in EverSource. This Catalina. Celentano. It took an enormous amount just to get a hold of this one person. I've been down to Eversource. I've made calls, left a tons of messages. There's just nobody returns. Finally, I got a hold of this woman, and um, she said there is a possibility of doing this. So sometimes when you install <clears throat> Eversource, we'll give you. Um, they will give you a, a rebate for certain projects. And so there, there is a possibility, she said, and here, and I, I will put this to Jeannie. Um, decorative um, street lamps would be eligible for some rebate funding at this time because it's first come, first serve through our prescriptive program. Uh, and to attach the incentive amounts, um, please note that the rebate depends on the wattage of the fixture that you install. Um, so, and then we talked a little bit about power lines, which is some other unrelated and theoretical project that I don't want to get into, but that's on here too. Um, so there's a possibility of doing this. There's a worksheet I'll pass around that I have not. I just got this today, and I've been at work. I apologize, I can't. That's as far as I got with this. There's also a possibility of, of uh, going through a Northern Borders grant that I will uh, look into this week and see if, if that I heard was all <coughs> possibility. And you're not so. suggesting any lights for the southern side of the street? No, I am not at this time. We are just working on, because of the upcoming sidewalk, just doing right now, just and this. where would the electricity go if we're going to cut it, do that sidewalk? If we're going to have lampposts, how many lampposts, where would they be for the placing of the electricity? Well, exactly. And that's the proposed location of the lampposts. But aren't we doing the other side of the street as yeah. well? I believe we're doing the other oh, side. Oh, you are. <clears throat> okay. Um, I thought it was just the one side of the street. I think there were sections. Oh, I get it right here. Kind of like where Gales is and stuff like that that was getting done. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm misunderstood. There is, because this would one require side. different electrical source than our outlets at the trees. <clears throat> would they? Well, you're sure. Or we sure. tweak the location <laughs> of the, this one over the tree. You know what I mean? I mean, this is, is really on a light in a tree? Not in the tree, but a little conduit coming over from when the <laughs> sidewalk. I mean, up. it's really a question for an electrician. Yeah, yeah there you and go. I, and I have talked to uh, J.P. Electric uh, Carter, and he said he would ha be happy to come down and meet with whoever, um, <clears throat> Jeannie and, and any of you, if you want to just walk down and discuss this in, in more detail, what we need. Uh, 
so forth. I One just of the biggest things first. we have is we've been trying to get Main Street the sidewalks done for years, and now we finally have it. We have a plan. We accepted the bids, and then we find out about the lights. So we don't want to lose that window where we've finally done it because they're in really rough shape. <clears throat> so yeah. we have to be kind of forthwith and acting on this, and it involves a lot. But if we could at least establish that. Uh, <coughs> runs and yeah, get them stubbed off somewhere mm -hmm. in some way, and then focus on the lights or something. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> that's but that's what really I. Have yeah. Well, originally, Jules, the committee, we were talking about what lights and how much would they be, and it's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. we don't have to decide that right now because this is about where they're going to be placed yeah. for the sidewalk project. Right, and that, and that then is we an do <coughs> what right process. Take a look at this and. So the first step is to contact J.P. Carter. Well, he's the one who gave us the estimate for the other work. That's why I said J.P. Carter. So who will do that? Getting in touch? I, I've already gotten in touch and asked him, um, but he said he'd be happy to calm down, meet whoever wants to meet. I don't know. It's up to the board to decide who's how that's going to be handled, I guess. Didn't he already, didn't he already give us a quote on putting underground uh, piping for the outlets to come up? For well, the Christmas tree lights, yeah. Okay, so that's different. Yeah. Well, so then you would have to <coughs> to go So if the you same. have a problem with one or the other, do you yep. want both shut off? Right. No, you don't. I think you need to talk to him because if you're running the conduit, you can run it a different circuit or whatever. But you can run a separate conduit. To, uh, yeah. So these would just be add-ons yeah. to what we're having. Yeah. And, um, it's just sticking the wire outside. in the ground. He's already going to be there. So. Yeah. We just need a good price for him for the extra. Talking about the way and trying and trying here and there. It's so all. Um, and it's going to be from this corner. Down. This is about where we we'd like him. Uh, I think. Probably we all have to take a look at that. Um, determine which part of the south side we're going to be doing <laughs> too for the side. That's not this year. It's not this year. Which side is it? This, it side? says it says here um, removal of asphalt between the wheelchair ramp of Rescue Road and the wheelchair ramp located at the parking lot entrance near the corner of 295 Main Street. And then the wheelchair ramp lane located on Tyron Lane and the wheelchair ramp located on Rescue Road. And then removal of the wheelchair in between the wheelchair ramp located on School Street and the wheelchair ramp located on Tyron. So it's this side. Just this side. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been operating, we've been operating on, is that the sidewalks this year were only that one side of the road. Do we need concrete tip downs? The only other, yeah. The only other question that I, suggestion that I have is that um, I know that there were some overgrown, do you remember the trees that weren't, were supposed to be dwarfs and they weren't dwarfs and the business owners asked us to trim them or cut them down so depending on what kind of, of lantern is going to go there, would we check with the business owners to see if it's going to block their um, front, storefront, so you'd position it kind of in between a storefront or two storefronts. Oh, I see. What you see what I'm saying? So you wouldn't block the storefront right. of and one this, and then not the other. Yeah, and this, this isn't exact. Right. I, I thought it was more, but yeah. That's a I good just point. thought maybe um, if you kept that in mind. That's a good thought, well, as we refine it, because we have trees, and then I tried to kind of position them in between uh, the existing a couple of the trees did get removed because they were very oversized, and, and the one got removed because of the, the water issue down at the down below. But I think that the business owners are pretty happy with the way that the tree situation is downtown, where it's not really blocking their uh, facade in the yeah. front, which is I know well, that's another cost thing from J.P. Carter. All right, so yes, yeah. could possibly if, you, if you're out there, maybe. Um, could put uh, some chalk or something where you on the sidewalk where you're suggesting. Okay. You know, X marks. X, X marks. Or X even marks. marking paint would work better. Yeah, a little spot of black marking paint. We'll see a black top, but it won't be a true. <coughs> black on black. Do you want? Am I yeah. authorized you to would do that? See it or orange. If you look for it. Just use either the white or the paint marking. It's going to wear out anyway. Mark it anyway. 
Okay, oh, so no I, pig. Just thought I'd throw that We're going to rip just that up. We're going to rip that up in 60 mm -hmm. days. Anyway. Down, I don't want to walk green. down there and see pink. I'm uh, sorry, I have green. permission I'll to green. go green. spray green. paint. Green. Green. Only if it's pink. Only if it's pink. <laughs> pink it is. Julia? I yeah. paint little lamps. That's not fair. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, yeah. So we're going to be adding lampposts. The poles are staying, correct? Or yes. Are we, okay. As of now, yeah. 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 That's millions of dollars. I can't imagine the cost to put that underground. Yeah. <coughs> millions of dollars to put that underground. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the like, yeah. <laughs> fiber optics alone? Three utilities, yeah. So, okay, so I will mark it. I, do you want me to contact JP? Well, I already contacted him. You want me to get an estimate? Get, get, it, get it going. I'll, I'll yep. CC and Jeannie Perfect. and yep. whoever wants great. to go along for the ride. Joe and Jeannie. Yeah. I would love to go down there. Okay, Boston next week. I'll bring my orange paint. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention on the matter. And next meeting is Wednesday at 5.30. I have... Uh, the the signed forms for the downtown committee for the committee members to be sworn in. And so at our next meeting, prior to starting, I will swear in the whole lot of you. And uh, right. we'll be official. I also right. have your planning board one, but we'll do that at planning board. All right, right. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jeannie's got her hand up. <coughs> Julia, um, are, you, are there any other projects besides the lampposts that you're working on? Any activities coming up that the selectmen should know about? Um, always lots of activities, I guess. Um, well, uh, just as an example, and I, I think we talked about this, the press release that was in the paper. So I think it'd be helpful for the selectmen to know about those as you know, before they come up. So they know it's because the committee is a, is under the selectman's office. So I just didn't know if there were other things coming up that they should maybe be aware of. As far as publications, um, I am... Activities, meetings. Well, like I said, the next meeting is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It's at 5.30 at the Hall Memorial Library. All are welcome. It's going to be a presentation on by the John Cirillo, if that's how you say his name. Yes. Um, and he's going to discuss uh, the historic district and how it may, or, you know, the nuts and bolts of how it can help a downtown area. I uh, have some experience with that. He's the president now, I, I guess, of the Tilton Historic <coughs> Society. Um, I'm thinking about, but I have not done a newsletter. This is a good point. But it is unofficial, and I'd be happy to hear your opinion, but it's not going to be a public notice of any kind or any kind of official notice or publication by the committee. It's an informal piece of... Uh, so it won't have the Main Street Committee's name on it? No, it is not. It is just my opinion of what's... Not my opinion, but I'm trying to, to encourage some communication with the downtown areas. For instance, with parking, here's an idea. How about, let's just ask them not you know, not the business owners not to park in front of their... And they've been there Gee, that's a good idea. Let's just ask them. If we had thought of that before, 50 times. Keep trying. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, I know trying. we have an ordinance. Keep, and, yes, um, we do. Yeah. We've not, it is annoying, yes. but that they don't, uh, apparently, a lot of them don't follow it. <coughs> I'm sure you've tried, but, you know, <coughs> if, if... I have personally gone door to door and knocked on the door and had conversations, long conversations, <coughs> with business owners yeah. about not parking there and, and respecting each other so that, because business, some businesses would park in the front of other businesses and stay there all day. Yeah. And uh, so then it would be retaliated in a way. And, and that's what I'm hearing. Went, knocked on the door, had many conversations with the business owners downtown and, and there are a few, just a few, that are doing that. Yes, and I have heard it as a problem, but if perhaps we can warn them and say, here's an idea, people are discussing the idea of parking enforcement. Well, That's, we do. That could come down the line as. Well, in the summer, there is parking enforcement, and as soon as they see the uniforms walking down, 
it's like it's like little ants going with all the vehicles out back. Not the vanity ones. You know, it, it's it's <clears throat> a great thing to help reinforce and any yep. yeah. encouragement and getting down, talk to them on their level. Right, it's help an experiment to That's see right. if. Can you can you mm -hmm. help us out? Yeah. Everybody keeps asking. Honor system here. And, uh, later, maybe with your little touch in their background and. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't, you can't, you get it, I figured, right. it, I mean, yeah, a lot help. of towns have parking enforcement, and that's what it comes down to mm -hmm. a lot of times. We parking. have in the past, yeah. that we, we are semi-effective. Uh, yeah. yeah, it has, it goes in spurts. So. I, just, I just have one other question, as a follow-up to that press release, did anything ever come out of that? Did anyone take advantage of the free rent downtown? Janie, it was in the paper for one day only. Um, not that I know of, but that spot, if I called them, the business owner, not long after that, and now it's rented out. Okay. So I don't know. He's, if maybe somebody saw it, I don't know. Nobody has emailed me about it, though. But yeah, it was only in there for one day, and it wasn't any kind of official release. Great from, idea. From the, thank you. But anyway, yes, uh, if there's any kind of official stuff, and uh, you can have a copy of the newsletter. It will have a disclaimer on there that it is not. Now, it's an editorial piece, more or less. But, okay. um, there is one thing, um, end of April, first week in May, um, trying to put together. I still have, haven't heard from a couple of the people, but uh, the River Committee will be oh, right. sponsoring a uh, riverbank cleanup. I'd like to get some of the blue bags down at Public Works and uh, start. What day? Hmm? What day? Um, don't know yet because I have to coordinate it with uh, uh, the middle school, Sanan Saunders and uh, uh, Kylie Yam from the uh, Tilt School. So I'm trying to pick a pick a day and. I'll bring down the uh, the grill and have a barbecue for everybody that's helping out. Uh, a great time will be had by all. I insist. For so the riverfront cleanup, for how far are you going to go? Um, I'm thinking right now from uh, Ernie's. <laughs> God, Chuck Mitchell would hate me. Ernie's <coughs> to uh, the dam down there. Salmon Run. Salmon Run, yes, otherwise known as Salmon Run. Well, part of it is Salmon Run. Right. Uh, but be that as it may, we all know the piece of property we're talking about. And that's where we propose to start. And uh, I'm trying to get with Scott Haskins, see if he can get some of the kiddies from uh, uh, his side of the river and uh, to his side as well. Uh, and, be in touch, a volunteer. Um, and yes, absolutely. And on that day, I will be singing the dates loud and clear here. And uh, hopefully, we'll get lots of volunteers and it'll be a good time. Juliet, are your minutes being posted to the town clerk? Yes. Good. I am all up to date. They are on the website. Very good. As far as, yeah. Um, that's for Main Street, and one of the things we talk about is parking. Um, there's a lot that's located behind this building. Everybody knows this one, where the old auction house was. Mm -hmm. Auction house, right? And uh, it's torn down, fenced in. Um, it's not being used. Be great to have that for parking. <laughs> yes. And presently, they're very delinquent on the taxes, which is public information. I think the town should look into. Um, I did not know that because we uh, had discussed doing something. With that. <coughs> doing that. Fenced-in area is parking for them. That's the old movie theater, mm -hmm. and part of their site plan right. to have their apartments on the third floor that they have to put the parking in. There. Right. Well, there you uh, go. I, also, right. that's something that yeah. they're going to be doing. Private yes. to the uh, building. How long ago was that? I thought. But is this recent within the last two years? No. Okay, it, so yeah. one of the things is that there are significant taxes owed on it, and it would be something that, that I think the town should pursue. They'll pay them. They yep. always do. Every year they do. Every year. 
you know, and the town might be able to work something out for um, turning into public parking and lessening the amount of taxes or something. They currently are approved for them to uh, vote that as parking as Judy yeah, said, to have yeah, their parking yeah. upstairs. I haven't had a good relationship with them. Really. <clears throat> that is not expired as of today. And she's talked with them. <coughs> talked with them too. That's the owner of the, what used to be the barber shop. Yeah. yeah. 281 Main Street. Definitely something that I think we could That's keep the pressure on. Great idea. We had talked about, and I thought of calling him and just saying, what would it take? So. Awesome. A lot of parking. Thank you. That would be wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. And Juliet, I left that there for you. We have. Um, Selectman's report and Judy, did you have anything? If, if you got it, I just had a. Yeah, we get all. Well, we have a lot of time. We don't have all the time in the world, but. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> okay, time's up. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> now, now we're going to go into non public. That's okay. All right. I brought forth for you all. I am not the southern. Would you like a piece of candy? No, thank you. <laughs> you have a white man on the Why you came tonight is to ask if you would reconsider your decision that all participants in the 150th Street Fair get tulip insurance. Because I've looked into tulip insurance. I didn't know. If reconsider? Did we make a decision? Yes. Yes. We made a decision that everyone. Uh, was I here? <coughs> Yes, you were. Mm -hmm. Why are you not? If they would fill out so, the application, but we would ago, waive right? the. Um... So, just as a reminder, um, what meeting was this? March 21st. And um, it was under uh, discussion, it was a consensus of the board to waive the fee for hawkers and peddlers. However, the 150th committee will have. The vendors complete the license and permit application form and provide the applicable documents, i.e. certificate of insurance. And what Judy is referring to is the TULIP insurance when I went through Primex to have the conversation about coverage for these activities. They, um, they recommended not. They then pointed uh, me to a certain type of insurance called TULIP insurance which is provided through Primex so that um, in situations like this, the vendors could get coverage. And I did check into it. I reported back to all of you that it, they said it was about $175 per vendor to get the coverage. And then I think Judy's now done some research and that's why she's here tonight. So I called three different insurance companies, got quotes, and it's 173 to 175 for a 10 by 10 space. And uh, that's pretty cost prohibitive for the general crafter to do. Um, I did talk to Gloria, who allegedly our rep for the town at Primex. And I told her my concern with the tulip, and she said, well, she'd be concerned with high risk items being sold, and she referred to guns, which we're obviously not gonna have a gun vendor. Um, but anything that would cause harm to the public, obviously, mm -hmm. would be a concern. Um, and any consumable goods, but not as concerned with Granny making blankets, as an example. So tonight, I was requesting if we could first use a different um, application that's more clear and concise mm -hmm. for a general crafter, and if we could reconsider the tulip thing or not. So, so you're proposing you that uh, uh, food vendors and that kind of stuff would have to have the liability, but still have to the crafters and what have you would not. Right. Sounds reasonable to me. But how would you, for the crafters, how would you word it? What's the wording that's going to be different that so that we can not be liable? I do not know. Well, I think you already said it. They're not going to sell knives and guns, and they're not going to sell food. 
instead of they do have to carry their Dan no, dangerous <laughs> items including but not limited to there you go right. and Peter just finished it but um, <clears throat> like I would do consumables food with insurance but knives guns that type of thing not at all mm -hmm. don't even allow them to come even if they've got their own insurance there you go it's too too much for us yeah so it's as simple as that sorry there goes your plan <laughs> So, <coughs> should there be something on the application that says this, as a crafter, something that you will not sell those items, and well, you agree that you will not? On, like if you look at, um, like our last uh, summer fair one, the ones we use, one Tilton Mill Home Day, it specifically gives us the opportunity to refuse any booth. Committee reserves the right to limit or forbid distribution or sale of any items or products. So. I would say we should use one of the old home day uses if they've been using it all these years without problem. It's been workable, yep. And I do also like how they have a resident fee and a non resident fee. I thought that's kind of They waived the fees, though. Hmm? They waived the fees. Well, you've waived the fees for the hawkers and peddlers, yeah, but yeah. we were still going to charge a booth fee so that we well, you make do money whatever you want to do, sure. <clears throat> and one lady that didn't. I didn't understand that, though, that that's what we were waiving. What, the hawkers and peddlers? You're waiving the fee, but you were... The hawkers and peddlers fee. Right. To us. Were, but you were requ requiring the insurance. That's what you... But then in addition to that, whoever is in charge of setting up the craft fair during this event is also going to charge the vendors correct. a fee for a booth. Right. That helps correct. pay for the event for entertainment and all that. So that's in addition to. Yeah, I that's a separate <coughs> that. it, which wouldn't be on this permit necessarily. That's a separate thing. Well, no, it's, it's not a separate thing. Why wouldn't it be? It would be on the permit. Because they're applying for the, so if they apply for a craft table, and I'm going to make cutting boards, I would say I'm a resident, and this is what I would do, and this is where I'm going, and then I wouldn't be paying the town the hawkers and peddlers fee, but I would be paying you, uh, you know, appropriately. Right, and if you remember at the, what you directed at the last meeting was that, the committee who's running this street fair would be responsible for getting each vendor to fill out the hawkers and peddlers license. You'd be taking care of that and then getting that to the select board. Right. And that's <coughs> one of the things I'm asking tonight is to not use that document because um, some of the vendors I've spoken to, they're like, okay, this is just stuff that this is crazy for, say, a regular crafter. And yeah, you copy of your state hawkers and peddlers. Well, if you're selling <coughs> Avon, that's not a fruit of your own labor. Right. But you're not going to go get a state hawkers and peddlers. Right. So are you suggesting that you're going to come up with your own application? Right. I just showed you that another right. was just mentioning, right. like, the old home day one. Use that as a template. Right. So that's what you would give the vendors. Correct. Right. And they would pay you a fee. And you would waive, you would tell them they wouldn't have to have insurance unless they were, it, it was a consumable. Right. And then, then you would send all these completed applications to the selectmen or to the, to the I guess, the, the office. Um, and those that required insurance would provide that name in the town as a, an additional insured. Now, in the application that you provide, would it then also indemnify the town like it has in the, uh, at the bottom of one of these because it sounds like you're going to make your own form up and I would guess the selectman would want to look at that and approve it. Absolutely. We've done fairs in the past, craft fairs in the street past, fair. during, the, during the street fairs and I think this is the what um, Judy's going after that each one of them didn't, uh, shouldn't need to fill out a hawkers and peddlers because it's much more detailed with licenses and who's going to sell for you and 
so on and so forth. And <coughs> with the craft fair, it's contained in, in you're running the craft fair, you're vetting that when you've got the application. Mm -hmm. you, you have a right to refuse each and any one of them um, to what they're selling. So, and you don't want to have 15 people selling the same thing, so you kind of divvy it up. I mean, you've done craft beers for years. So, I don't, I, I would recommend that we don't, that we just completely not do the hawkers and peddlers and come up with just a uh, <clears throat> form that Judy's going to make up specific to the street fair. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanted, you know, if this was to continue a next year or another year, not just the 150th, you'd have something, a framework to go with for Tilton. I mean, that would be my recommendation. I, it would be so cost prohibitive for me to, to say, well, geez, I've got to do this and then get insurance and then pay you for the booth. So that would mean that I would spend 20, 30 hours creating something just for the town. And then the rest would be for me, if I sell it. So, I mean, it's a gamble. You know it. You've been in the craft business for years. <clears throat> so, I would I would make a motion that we not uh, in, not require the hawkers and peddlers for the the 150th Street Fair. Is that what you're naming it? Yeah. And then um, and then uh, allow Judy to come up with a um, application for. Uh, booth mm. for uh, booth space vendors. I'll get it all to you ahead of time so you can review it. Motion and second. 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 We, we have a couple seconds here. Choose one, go. Hang it even up. Um, now, any <coughs> discussion? Yeah. Liability. <clears throat> do we pick that up, or do we have to discuss that, or is that another? Do you want to go on to this? Vote for this and then talk about live the insurance. We already made a motion. It's already been seconded. Okay, any discussion on that? I don't think that included the insurance. No. So we can take them one step at a time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the I only didn't. thing that I would add, and I probably don't have to, is just make sure the town, I like the language in here that holds harmless for yeah. all the things listed. <laughs> We so also don't think that uh, <clears throat> application has worked real well for uh, us over there in the pines. We've had no problems. <clears throat> well, I know whenever we set up as the Coney Indian Association for the Old Home Day, we have to provide a certificate of insurance for Old Home Day. But that's because we're serving popcorn, food, and stuff food. like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's great, but the other thing is to maybe put in the application, get positive identification, like copy of the driver's license, so if something well, ever did happen. The other thing we'll do, too, is um, each vehicle that they're bringing in, we will have the vehicle ID number, but then they'll get a placard that has to hang from their mirror or on their windshield with the cell phone number they can be reached at during the event. Mm -hmm. So if the police have to get hold of them, we do this at dog shows. Yep. So that way, if, if somebody has to get hold of you during the day, that's where they get hold of you. Yep. Otherwise, it just great idea. Yeah. Okay, so great idea. we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Got it. But now we need insurance. insurance. I'll make a motion to waive the insurance requirement for the crafters who are serving non who are selling non consumables. Or what was the other dangerous item? Mm -hmm. High risk. High yeah, risk. Right. Motion. For this event. Second. 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 Discussion at the junior Well, I, I would guess you might want to make it more specific than that. You said for non-consumable, consu non-consumables, but is there anything else that a crafter would make that could be considered a high risk? Yeah. Candles, oh, yeah. I don't know. If, if you really want to get into it, well, I, I make look, letter openers. Look, I mean, that's high risk. Well, right. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, for me, all, all I'm trying to do is look out for the town and keep 
you right, exactly. <coughs> from being exposed. I agree with you. So, and so the application will specific. have on there that <clears throat> have the right to refusal. And what we can do too is as they come in, like weekly, we can give you the application. And so each select board can say, okay, I'd like to question this further. Let's get hold of them and find out. Mm -hmm. Because something I might think is innocuous, somebody else might say, really? So that way we have other sets of eyes on it to say, okay, let's let's take a peek here and see if we're okay. I think that you've done enough of them that you know that I, I, I really don't think we need to approve every single one of them. That that's going to only just, if you're unsure, maybe. Right. If you're unsure, I get it. But exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I. Mm -hmm. I've been to you. I know what you know the kind of crap here you run. So, I have no, absolutely no doubt whatsoever that when you vet these people, that they're gonna have quality things. So, and not have high no risk. problem at the event saying, Get right. that off your table. That's not yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, you, you can all do, yeah. I have absolutely no doubt in that. But the insurance part. So we had a motion. You do. And oh, sorry. Let's go back. Can you reiterate? What, what do you have for a motion? The insurance requirement for those not serving consumables. So, and or high, high risk. risk. And, and high, high risk. risk. <clears throat> um, so that would mean anybody that Items. that had a craft a crafter. Is am I correct? Because if they were selling things like Avon, they would need insurance. Correct. Only if you're eating it. Oh, yeah, only if you're eating it. Which is totally your choice. <laughs> I suppose. Well, what okay. Is the risk of so the reason why I say that is because some craft fairs, they, because it's a lotion and things going on your body and you can ingest that, they require a liability insurance. You That's why I say kittens. that. <clears throat> I mean, if you silly yeah. enough to eat Avon. <clears throat> I get that. But... If you take, right, if you, it's not that you ingest it, eating lotion, I'm not suggesting that, you but if you're a let, no, but if, if you put it on your face and it gets in your mouth or whatever, and you're, or you're allergic to it or whatever, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong. I'm just suggesting it. Peanuts. I've seen it in other people that make soaps, people that make sauce and things like that. Grab some beads off a table where somebody's made bracelets and swallow them and choked it up. So, yeah, I'm, I think unless it's a consumable or high risk, I don't think Avon's high risk, although it is to yeah. me. I keep 20 feet from the table. Could you add to that or other items at the discretion of? Actually, the that's committee? in there. She, we it's reserve the, the right to, to so that's say at the discretion. No. Who determines so the, high risk? On the motion, so the motion says, <coughs> the motion was... Wave insurance requirement. Somebody has to wave determine insurance. what high risk is. What was the motion specifically? It was to waive insurance requirement. The non-consumables. Non-consumables and high risk. And high risk items. So we need to broadly define high risk items, guns, knives. Or when you think of a 1860 magazines, event, somebody some. might think that it would be okay to do little bows and arrows. Well, that would be a high risk item. That's what I'm saying. At, if so you, you had some motion say, at the discretion sorry. of the. But that's already there. How are you going to. How motion. So it doesn't have to be. We've already discussed it to death. It's a high risk item, so somebody has to determine what that is. That would be the person setting up the right. right. So we're that would be Judy. To. I mean, add it if you want. I don't mind, but I just say we're nitpicking. I don't think it needs to be. I don't either. But if it makes you more comfortable and you want me to add it to the motion, I don't mind. So, what did you want to add to the motion? It's high risk items, which will be de to be determined by. At the discretion. Or at the discretion. At the discretion of the committee. There you go. Eventually. You're going to add that to my motion. At the discussion of the committee. I don't think he knows anymore. <laughs> She's real good at what that is. And you have to ask the, uh, the seconder if he still will second. I'll second. There you go. Good. Yes. Let's go. Any further discussion on the motion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. My last two question. Two for two. <laughs> um, this might just be a quick genie question. Like this one says, make checks payable to Tilton Northfield Old Home Committee. Do we want it to the 150th committee or to Town of Tilton? I'll just check with Tim on that. That's a very easy question. I, I don't believe the uh, 150th has a reserve fund of any type, do we? Right. I think so. So I think it has to be. So the, the way Tilton. it comes into the town of Tilton is to the town of Tilton. Tilton. Okay. So Unless we're going to have a fund over in Belize somewhere. Well, that is an idea. I think <laughs> that that need, really needs to be discussed, though, Kathleen, at some Belize. point. The, it's the only way monies come into the general fund is by way of reserve. What's the other accounts? By special well, accounts? Um, yeah. Other, well, other than that, they come to the town of Tilton. Yeah. But what if, I you know, so we have the senior center where monies come in, and Tim sets it aside for senior center. But it still comes to the town of Tilton. Town of Tilton. Well, we have town of Tilton Eat senior Marks. center. That's what they when they pay for a check. They go town of Tilton and senior senior center. But we don't have that set up. But now that Judy and Jeannie are here, and, and you guys that are on the hundred fiftieth committee, should there be something set up because you're going to be selling ornaments and things like that? <laughs> they could put it. He could put a line item. He could put a. Um, we can put a line item in our budget, I guess, but right. But as long as the but it's still so that you can account for the monies coming in. But the check still should be made out to the town of Tilton. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I agree with you on that. But I'm at this time, we all should start think asking Tim to create <coughs> some type of an account, a, a, a line item, because you've got the 150th committee come money. I'll bet you in. that Tim has already done that. Think so? Let's see what he's doing. can't add a line item to Never the budget know. without our permission, but a there is a line it. item because the didn't we budget monies for the 150th? Yes. Yes. Yeah, but it's not a revolving it fund. There's an expense line in the budget, but not a separate bank account. That's right. No, and there not shouldn't a revolving be. fund, no. So that we'd just be account. identifying those monies. Right, so he'll keep it. <coughs> yeah. Right. And a lot of the, the committees had to give him money. I have to write on it. What right. It so it's like it's the park down. commissioners yeah. when they have their events and they collect monies. It's hand delivered to Tim or with a note that says this was collected from and by yeah, the Y and Four. That is. That's all. Thank you. So but no slush. I have a question. How are we doing with the uh, the banners and that? Are they on sale yet? A couple people asked me how they find out. Tomorrow at three, we have a meeting. Um, so I'll check with Kelly here. Uh, next door. <coughs> and then at six o'clock. Hey. Outstanding. There you go. Everyone's welcome. Um, tomorrow night at six, I'm meeting with the newly formed Tilton Historical Society. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because one of the things we're doing for the 150th that I wanted to do was a historic walk. But I'm one person, so I reached out to them and said, hey, would you guys want to team up and help make that happen? And they're Excellent excited idea. as can be. Very nice. So, yeah, because yep. they've got the knowledge. They've got yep. so much information that mm -hmm. it's like, let's let's get more people Ooh. involved. Because the I more mean, people go involved, the easier it goes and the more fun it is. Yep. Do you want some input on <coughs> The checks can be written out to the town of Tilton and in the memo line put 150th celebration. There you go. Perfect. Thank That's you. We cool. do. Yep. Well, I think it should be even maybe a little more specific because you want to say it's street for the street fair, fair banners so that we can track to right. for future events. <coughs> That's it. Bye bye. Thank you. What are you these forms back? Yeah. <laughs> it's just all different samples. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, thanks. Come to the meeting if you want. Oh, I'll be there. Okay, um, we have selectman reports. Start with. Um, I, and I just, at, at the end of your report, I have a non public I'd like to. And then after that, yeah. So. I do have a little question for, for Judy. Judy, are there any members of the 150th committee 
that uh, uh, have yet to be sworn in? No, we're sworn in. <clears throat> Just curious. We're trying to keep on top of that stuff. Um, okay. So, I think we did Pat on first last week. Yeah, because Catherine wasn't here. Go back to the swim. <coughs> um, was the discussion of um, Dari's um, serving part time, non public? No. 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 Then I asked some questions. Um, and I apologize, I haven't had a computer for a week, so I haven't caught up on email. So if you sent this out, if that information is there, I can look tonight at home. But um, was it de designated the time period? Was it specific? And um, um, I understand it's weekly, but yet the planning and zoning only meet three times a month. And is there any kind of description of what exactly we're paying him to do? So <clears throat> when the suggestion was made by the select board to ask if he would consider doing this on a part-time basis, um, I met with Dari and asked him what he thought it, how many hours he thought it would take just to get just to do the things that would be necessary to keep the town moving forward until we find a new planner. And he estimated about five hours a week. And that primarily uh, included things like um, uh, attending and staffing the planning board and zoning board meetings, which also included taking the minutes. Uh, receiving completed applications from the land use technician. I can give you all this approximately 21 days prior to your meeting. He s spelled it all out. Review planning board applications and provide a review report to the uh, board in advance of meeting meetings. Uh, review reports which, in, which will include administrative completeness review, review for compliance with existing regulations, a general planning review to highlight any concerns or elements requiring additional clarification regarding traffic, parking, lighting, drainage, natural resource protection, compatibility, community goals, and other community planning related concerns, recommendations regarding the use of third party consultants such as engineering or legal consultants. Attend planning board meetings for the purpose of assisting the planning board, draft minutes for the planning board meetings, assist with any com community planning initiatives at the direction of the selectman, attend staff zoning, uh, attend and staff zoning board of adjustment meetings, receive completed applications from land use technician approximately 18 days prior to the meeting, which they will be, which would be addressed attend ZBA meetings for the purpose of assisting the ZBA, recommend and review and draft potential zoning amendments and revisions to regulations, policies, and rules. Um, no such work would be pursued without town approval in each case. For example, I might present a concept for a regulatory change that I would believe would benefit the town, but only pursue it if asked to do so. Provide general ad hoc planning services as requested by the Board of Selectmen. And he, he listed some ways that he thought um, he could save time uh, that you wouldn't have to focus on using him. So he guesstimated about five hours but uh, a week. But my understanding is if he only works three hours, he's getting paid for three hours. Right. So he's doing more than just attending meetings. Yes. Okay. And was that an email? It was an email to me. Oh, okay. But I can provide that. That would be great because... Um, I was asked to ask this, I didn't, and I didn't have the answer to it. Um, <clears throat> Catherine, I think. I just have one more question. Um, the agreement between John Bernard um, talks about the width of the road for him to expand it. No, it was to make it only 18 feet and not 24. Right, but what is the road now? It's probably not 18 feet. It's yeah, Plastics it's, Road. No, it shouldn't, no. No, so why would Plastic. we ask, and I'm, I truly don't know the answer to this, 
why would the Board of Selectmen ask him to expand the side of the road, which also has stone walls, which are boundary walls, which we would have, he would probably have to disturb if he was going to make the wall wider, because he's also going to make ditches, right? No, I, I don't think that. <coughs> we, I was told by John that they were 18, that 18 would be able. And I, he sat right here and said that. Why are we require Why are we requiring him to alter the road at all? Because he's the one that came to us and said that he would prefer to have it at 18, asked us to have it at 18 inches, 18 feet instead of 24. But he didn't want it 24. But maybe he would have been happier to not have to alter it at all. I'm just because I'm just concerned because we all know it was reported to us. It was reported to us by Joe that stone walls up there have been. And the town, bar, the town marker is gone. Right. Well, it's illegal to do that. Without say so, yeah. So that's why I'm saying, has anyone like public works director gone up and looked at the road to see what would happen if somebody made that 18 feet wide, which is going to include ditches, what would happen to those walls, which are boundary walls, which you can't move legally? I can't believe that I didn't think of that. Oh, I am too. I can't believe that. It, it, <coughs> it's like, duh, that's an excellent idea. It, it, it would be a violation yeah. the RSA. But yet the Board of Selectmen is requiring him to make the road 18 feet wide. He didn't require He asked permission to have But you said, yes, 18, go ahead and make it 18 feet it wide. So does that mean, yes, go ahead and move the walls? Mm. No, and, and it doesn't mean he can go and blast with dynamite or whatever it wants and to I do. Think and I think it's already taken place. But I think there dynamite? was... Dynamite? No, the no. walls. Yeah, I think no, there, that was years ago. I think there was language in there that said that he could not do anything like ditching. He could not do... Uh, and I don't have it in front <coughs> of me, but... Did, and did you, did you actually see the document? Because I, you know, I could get that to you. Maybe that would solve it. You know, I believe I have it here. Because I'm pretty sure I read it. And it's the same document that was approved <clears throat> previously on the other end of the road, too. And the and other end of the road, we maintain it. Skates. By the cemetery? We maintain yeah. that under Pest House. No, it's the exact same language as was written for Steve and Christine Dembrinsky. Yeah. Oh, it's just, where is he? That's solar, that's town planner. This is release of liability. I'm hoping it's in this packet. Oh, no, it's not. We need to talk with Mr. Bernard. And make him fully aware of, of that does not give him leave to tear out stone walls. And I think that's important. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I'll, it I'll, I'll talk to him. It. Yeah, is this his memorandum of understanding? No. no. I mean, the same thing goes. You yes. can't cut down a tree if it's got an eagle's nest in it. That was yeah. well written. That's a law. We can't tell them nothing. I spent several yeah. hours yeah, of my life it. up there, and, and somebody had just widened the road. Maybe somebody told me. Mr. That. Chairman, yeah. if you like, I will call John <clears throat> Bernard and talk to him and tell him he's not allowed to disturb stone walls. Oh, rather, some or other permanent markers. Yeah. All right. Easy solution. Good. Well, that's it. That was my concern. And I think Tusa, you all said her. She hit it. Related to the board's decision to hire a non-employee at this point as a consultant, independent third party consultant, what errors and emissions insurance are they going to be carrying? as an independent contractor, because they're not an employee, they're not protected by the well, technically they are, they're a part-time yeah. employee. As an independent At, consultant? No, no. he's part-time employee. They're employee. a part-time employee, that would, they would be in a part-time employee and getting paid a set wage per hour. It's not a consultant. Thanks, Fijian Planning provides that service uh, all around mm -hmm. the, their area. What shows that? The circuit rider, they call it. Yeah, what shows that? Lakes Region Planning. We would contract through them right. to do right. that, and it would they be extra cost right. to Lakes Region Planning. So if they consult and provide advice, and they make a mistake, and if somebody gets sued, they don't have to do that. But he's a part-time employee. He's being employee. hired as a part-time employee. 
right. and Just not like Al is a part-time employee. Mm-hmm. And that would be like church and planning, right. and we would they be paying, they want a higher rate. By a dollar. <coughs> yeah, but they, then if somebody who doesn't have the experience that Dari has or the knowledge of the town. We pay for it seventy five bucks an hour. Joe, um, do you have anything? No, I'm totally well, pretty much. Oh yeah, the the senior centers don't mean to steal your thunder, Pat, but on the fourteenth of April, um, down at the Elks Lodge in Franklin, the senior center here in Tilton and in Franklin and in Belmont. I think there's another one as well. They've all banded together. They're going to have a senior breakfast to benefit the senior centers down at the uh, Elks in Franklin. Go ahead. Eight o'clock. Begins at eight. Come on down. Support your senior center. That's it. Peter? Amnesty, I believe, is uh, April 24th through 26th, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 to 3.30, Saturday, April 27th, 8.30 to 4. Uh, you go to the town website, you can find a link uh, under, I think it's uh, Recycling in Trash that has a flyer showing it. Uh, that's all I've got. I don't have anything like that. Did we ever get in touch with Belanger for the Senior Center? I know when he's going back. For the floor. We didn't get in touch with him with the floor. <coughs> we didn't know what the um, status was on his recommendation. We haven't done anything with any. So we'll we'll reach out to Kevin Belanger. And what exactly is it today? Um, it's for that the the floor that was pitching, right? Right. He repaired it, but he has to come in and tighten it to level it off. Right. We don't want to put a new floor in yet mm-hmm. until we know what the, that he's finished his work. Otherwise, it's going to just crack the floor um, on that. The um, executive committee is meeting on April 23rd um, at 1.30 for the senior center. We have a rental up there right now on Thursday evenings. And it started last week. Got my first email from Awakening asking them to park a certain way at the senior center until their businesses die down a little bit after 5.30. So, um not sure how to address that. I, I definitely will, but um, it's going to be difficult because my understanding from John is that it's going to be a combined parking. Reciprocal, right? Reciprocal. But again, once again, we, we sat here and, and listen to somebody that had sold the property. We didn't really listen to the owner. We never really got feedback from the owner. So I, I think I probably should reach out to um, Dr. Julian and ask um, really what the best times are and, and if, we, if it's going to be a conflict, so on and so forth. Because if it is, then it's not going to work. But so far, having the old plan that we had, we had a reciprocal uh, agreement that on Tuesday nights they would use the senior center and on Wednesday nights, it's packed on Wednesday nights, the senior center we would use theirs. And absolutely, you know, 10 years we've had no no issues whatsoever. And even uh, rentals would go over and ask if they couldn't, you know, if they had a wedding or something. And they would say yes, no problem at all. So I did get a uh, actually uh, 
Cindy got the phone call, Cindy Clarenbach got the phone call, forwarded an email to me. So I'll follow up on it. I just got that just today, a couple hours ago. Um, the other question that I had. No, I'm done. I mentioned it non public, it's personnel. That's it. That's all I have. Oh, the Easter Bunny. You didn't mention the Easter Bunny. April 27th, I believe. Or the town wide yard sale. That's Joe's baby. He used to have that. The town wide yard sale is April 20th. Oh, the 20th, yeah. Got to mention that every week so people um, would yeah, know. Yeah, that wasn't involved in the setup. That was all handled out of the selectman's office. Very capably, I might add. Um, if you need help <coughs> distributing maps or whatever, when the time comes, let me know and I will bring them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I get, well, no, you have flyers, right? Okay, I'll get a flyer, I'll take a picture, I'll post it this evening and start posting it to like the Northfield's talking thing and, and the Tilton side and the, yeah, everywhere. I, I think I took a picture of the flyer and put it out, but I didn't, I think I just. If we just have a, a breaking news announcement that the Easter Bunny will be arriving at Tilton's Parks Commission Egg Hunt, which is Saturday, April 27th at 10 a.m. at the Riverfront Park, which is, it's going to be uh, at the pavilion. Bring your own basket. Don't make them too big. You guys share here. Easter Bunny can only supply so much. Um, there's going to be three age groups, three years and under four years to seven years, and eight years to 12 years. So join us all for the fun at the park. For more information, you can email parks at tiltonnh.org or Commissioner Maria Marina Sumner at her email address, which can be found on the Town of Tilton webpage. So Easter Bunny is arriving at the park. Singer. Yeah, buddy. Think they'll card me? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Could be a laundry basket. <laughs> and anything else? Okay, so we are going to go into a non public personnel. Before I. I um, John, I, John, Mr. Chairman, I just have a couple things that don't need to be done non public. Okay. Um, so um, the the solar people, I communicated your decision to the solar people at Vermont Law Center, and she called today and asked if she could get on the calendar to speak with all of you about the projects. They still would like to pursue it. They'd like to have a conversation with you about, you know, the projects. So I told her that I would bring that to you tonight, and if you agree, you're not having a selectman's meeting next week. It would be the following week. Well, I've had my mind changed before by new information, but I, I personally tonight, tonight. feel that we should have them come here. This is for low-income housing, mm -hmm. and it would benefit the low-income uh, folks in our town, and we can separate that from uh, creating a precedent. Then I say, let's let's hear them out and, and, and see what they have to offer, because it is going to affect them. And that would be huge for somebody that's on a very fixed income to have their electricity bill. Not everybody over there is on, on yeah. uh, the low income. Yeah. You're right, but most yeah. of them are. Um, but the other difference is this electricity is going to be used by residents of the town of Tilton. No, it's it not. just goes into the it's grid. It's going to go into the grid, and they specifically said that will be used in other places, such as Belmont and other <laughs> But I mean, that's a question to ask them when so they So these residents, and when it was presented to the planning board, that's how it was presented, because I asked the question. In writing, they said not. <clears throat> so then I think that now we have a mis, you know, miscommunication. I think we can only benefit 
as a town to allow them to come in and speak to it. Oh yeah, go for it. You won't change my mind, but go for it. We'll see. Yeah. I'll put it on the schedule. Uh, the second issue was uh, just wanted to give you an update on the the property. The um, subdivision uh, is complete. David Krause has completed that. We'll be sending along the the documents. Um, the phase one environmental is in process. Um, so I think we're we're moving ahead and hitting, making sure that we're going to hit all the deadlines we need to head. It's up the street here. What's up? Is that the one up the street? Church property. 132 Bald Oh, that property. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Oh, yeah, that. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, I didn't see the other comparison. The other, the other uh, issue was the, um, you had asked last week when you approved the, um, for me to go ahead and put the ads in the paper for the town planner, um, you wanted to see the updated job description that is in your packet. Um, I do have. I think I signed it already. Okay. Yeah, I did too. I had some questions on it. They approved it last week. Okay, well, I still have some okay. questions because if they approved it, I'd like to go on record. So I don't know when you want to talk about it. Didn't you take the the didn't you take the job description and mark it all up and then give it to Gail and she wrote it accordingly? No, something else. So I thought you So here's my question. So I haven't seen the finished product. Zari gave us a job description back in January. In fact he gave it to us a couple times and when yeah. he gave it to us, um, he had also described how he see saw the whole um, office moving forward, which included the technician. So at that time, and he also gave us an, one of these. This is a new one. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, he wanted to increase our hours and was going to pass on mm -hmm. some of the responsibilities. If you look at 2014's, <coughs> which is the, I think it's the only one before this that was signed, but that might be me. Um, there are descriptions there. There are jobs in that 2014 that right now nobody has. They're not in this new one, and they're not in the land use technician's job summary because Dari hadn't had a chance to update this. You did update it. And that was what you hmm. all... <clears throat> So this last is, week that I handed out, you approved, and I incorporated all those changes, and that's what you have in front of you is the copy. I have the one here, and yours are all marked copy. That's a land use technician, right? But is this a town planner? What I so I'm sorry, maybe it's because my back was turned you. So what I said is these dis job descriptions <coughs> from the 2014 when we called it the land use coordinator, to the one that he wrote for town planner, which is very good. There are jobs in this one that no one has. This land use technician job, they're not in here, because this is the old one. I didn't know there was a new land use technician job. No, I, I'm so sorry. what I was saying is he was going to re renew this if we had approved additional hours for that position. But you didn't. But we didn't. So then this one still is in place, but all of these that are tabbed, they're nobody's responsibility if you take that out and go with the new one and this one. Because they're not in here. And they're not in here. So somebody has to be doing them. What are they, Kevin? 911 updating. So I can, that's well, and I can tell you too that in this one it has, um, I've read too much today in my homework. So it talks about the um, landlord affidavit. That's in the new one, it's in here. Okay, it talks about the landlord aff affidavits and I can't find it again. That gives him some responsibilities there, but it actually is the responsibility of the town clerk to keep those. That's in the housing standard ordinance itself. 
and she's also the keeper of the records and right now I'm the one who sends those out and keeps track of who has filed one and who hasn't because I'm the one that sends out all the notices to the dwelling units that they're going to be inspected so I include them in those but yet, <coughs> we have that in this. It's in, well, it's that's I mean, in, the, in this, this one. In the new one. Well, but those landlord affidavits will be kept in the IWARCs too, right? Those landlord affidavits can be kept anywhere you want, but the ultimate responsibility of where they need to be is with the town court. <coughs> he does mention, it, it is in here, that uh, serves as chairman of the Housing Standard Board, maintains property owner designated respondent affidavit information. But this, should that be a primary duty of his? Because it's, it sounds like you're saying the town clerk doesn't have to. It's so I mean, nitpicking. It's in the primary duty section. I'm so saying it shouldn't be a responsibility. It's way at the end. I'm saying it shouldn't be a responsibility of his. Um, Jeannie's got a question. So, not a question, just a comment. If you remember last week when you approved the job description, it was we needed to have a job description because we're interviewing people for this job. And I asked you then, I said, I need a job description because I'm putting ads in the paper right. and people are going to be asking for a job description. Right. So, if this needs, unless there's some I guess my opinion is, if, unless there's something major, major problem, I, I believe this could be tweaked later, but we've got to move on. I do believe that it depends on who we hire, what the job description is going to end up being. This is just something so that people, prospective uh, uh, applicants would have a general idea of what it is that they would have to do. <laughs> We may interview we may interview somebody that may fit well into a plan that Dari had suggested earlier, and we may change this altogether to primary duties. So yeah, I could. So see what it. I'm saying is, is you have duties that were the land use coordinators that are not going to be the town planners. So my question is, who's going to do them? And and I and I think. Um, I think Pat just addressed that by saying it really depends on who we're going to be seeing as applicants and what their flexibility would be or it's like, it's like any other job description at the very other at the very end of said as other duties as assigned. So you're suggesting that we might have to hire two people? No. No. Okay. No. It covers it no. when it says it doesn't. performs other duties <laughs> as required. And if that's a requirement, they perform it. This isn't just for now sheet. This is not the final. This is where we're okay. going to be at. Just, you know what, I won't belabor it, but please, at this point in the minutes, would you please make a note that I do not approve of the new town planner job descriptions and use what words you need for the reasons that I just relayed because, sorry. Somebody's got to do the job, do that work. So Agreed. I would ask you to point out and highlight what those job duties that are not in the land use technician and not in the planner, and nobody's going to do it. Could you identify those and send us an email? She kind of has. Oh, please. I don't All right. Know. Can you identify the? Can you make a copy and, and just send that out to <coughs> us, or give it to Gail and let her do it? Yeah, I'll take it. Why okay. don't I sit down with Jeannie next okay. week and? All right. have a conversation so that we that. so we don't miss it and we we do something with it at, at a very <clears throat> immediate future but for now this needs to be an ad well I you know I, I appreciate Catherine's concerns I think I do too we need to look at them but I really need to we need to be, when people start responding giving them a job description right because what it does is make us look mm -hmm. like we don't know what we're doing I agree with that, but when I looked at this, and it says performs other duties as required, and then I looked at this, I thought, that's a lot of stuff to pile on somebody if they, the duties may require. Yeah, but if they're a town planner, they're, I'm sure they're, I, I would be <clears throat> pretty confident that there's nothing unusual in there that they're not used to doing as a town planner. 
Well, this one, for example, says takes and transcribes minutes. This one says prepares meeting minutes. So what does that mean? Could would it be possible to make a copy of them? You know that. Like, I didn't make it in such a way that you'd have to study it yourself. All I did is put tabs on here to remind myself. <laughs> but for us to review it. And, you know, and everybody to, you can do the same thing I do. Take this. But I didn't see a problem with what we had. So. Did you look at the 2004? I'm not going to debate it right now. Because I, I'm so not you prepared. Want me I want to, to look at it. You okay. want me to write something that doesn't exist. And all I'm asking you, did you look at the 2014 and compare it like I did? And we're asking yes. that Jeannie has already volunteered. We're asking that Jeannie right. make the two two separations. I said I'd meet and talk to, to her about it, okay. but I okay. really don't want to write yep. a narrative. Right. I'll take okay. I don't I wouldn't either, Catherine. Okay. So. Thank you. <laughs> Not that I'm lazy. All right. So I, got a lot of kids I have the original. Can I get you to sign this? So I have it done and you can Well we think we signed something already. Is it? Mm. Oh you gave it an original? Oh. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Oh yes, that's right. Okay. Never if mind. If you got enough so you've got it. All right. Well, see if you've got it. All right. Um, oh, here we go. This is it. it. No, uh, you don't want to sign I'm this. I'm not anyway. signing that. No. <laughs> okay. Well, it had that is okay. the one right there. All right. Okay, um, and that's it for public. Ooh, we've already signed this, Peter and Pat. That's it. Okay. We're gonna make a motion that we go into non-public as per RSA 91. A colon three paragraph two and I lost it already. Um, it's going to be um, personnel is that A or B? Um, it's going to be A dismissal, promotion, or compensation of public employee or the discipline of such employee, investigation charges against an employee, affected as a right to a meeting, request that may be open, in which case the uh, Shall be granted. We're going to do a roll call. Well, uh, a motion. A second? There, the second. 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 Roll call vote. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. <laughs> oh, Dawson, Dawson. yes. Yes, man. Oh, yeah. And Scanlon, yes. And Joe? I would like to make a motion at this time, Mr. Chairman, to seal the minutes of the non public session as they pertain to personnel issues permanently. Second. We have a motion second sealed in minutes. The non-public personnel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. aye. How about you, Catherine? You want to stay? No. No opposition. Sorry. I gotta drive to so Dartmouth first thing in the morning. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat>